viewer's choice. You guys have selected a handful of games. I've bent over backwards and heard your anguish cries. Let's begin with a title on the Amiga 500. Ugh is an arcade slash action game developed by Egosoft and published by Playbite that was released for the Amiga, Commodore 64 and MS-DOS in 1992 that is a clone of the 1984 title Space Taxi. The game is set in the Stone Age and revolves around a caveman picking up passengers and flying them to their desired locations with 69 levels of difficulty evading dinosaurs, birds and other obstacles. The game was later distributed as shareware mainly via bulletin board systems and magazine cover discs. Let's check it out. This is the bare minimum of gaming. Flying Ugg's helicopter or whatever it is, it feels fine enough. The biggest problem you're going to have is trying to land the damn thing. You gotta be very gentle when picking up passengers. The slightest rough landing or collision will have you starting the game over and over again. The first few stages, they're not too bad. But believe me, by stage three, I was losing my bloody mind. And with 69 levels to complete, it's, as one would say, the never-ending frickin' story. Stage 3. Funny water. Oh, are you kidding me? The water's frickin' rising. So basically, it's become a time trial. Annoying. Pick up this bodacious cave, babe. Hurry up. Dino the dinosaur. Great. Oh my god, look at this obstacle. I guess the music is okay, or bearable if that. I don't know, there's not much I can say. Sorry Paul, your game kinda sucks man. Next up, a PlayStation Classic. Oddworld Apes Odyssey is a cinematic platforming adventure game it's developed by Oddworld Inhabitants and published by GT Interactive that was released for the PlayStation 1 on the 18th of September 1997 and was re-released for the PlayStation Classic on the 3rd of December 2018. The game is centered around the eponymous Abe, a slave at a meat processing factory, trying to inform and liberate his fellow Madokans of the danger as he attempts a perilous quest to emaciate his downtrodden people. The game was praised for its well-rounded graphics, hilarious humor, and puzzle-solving elements, and received an 85 out of 100 Metacritic score. Let's check it out. I've got mixed emotions when it comes to this game. I'll start with what I like. The dialogue and script is hilarious, and has a pretty decent storyline, as well as the cinematic cutscenes and graphics. I like the characters, Abe's ability to fight on command is freaking funny, and interact with other Madokans is a cool spin on the gameplay. Guiding them to safety and puzzle solving, meh, yeah, can be somewhat fun. Here's what I don't like. Man, this game is bloody hard. I spent a solid hour doing trial and error trying to save these Madokans, and Jesus Christ, I could not get the hang of it. So basically, I just fiddle with a bunch of switches, trying to guide them to safety, and end up killing majority of the clan. It is mind boggling. The platforming, whilst it feels good and similar to other titles like Prince of Persia and Dragon's Lair, a lot of the game is blatant trial and error, and you will struggle as for every screen has some sort of redonkulous platform that must be reached with no indication whatsoever, and half the time you'll be going back and forth leaping to one screen to another. It is ridiculous. Go sneak past this bloke, he's sleeping. What is this, Metal Gear Solid? Now oh, what's this? What's your leaders? What's this one do? Ah! If it looks like I don't know what the hell I'm doing, well, you're right. PlayStation wasn't a part of my vocabulary when I was younger, meaning I had a 64 and a Super Nintendo. So this is basically all new to me. The game, it's alright. It's not the best, but it's alright. It sucks. What the hell do we do? He's sleeping. Ah, what?
this is getting a bit annoying. There's got to be like a platform or a ledge or something. I no idea. Ah, oh, that's it. I've had enough. Peppy Lapita, your wish is my command. Conker's Bad Fur Day is a platforming and adventure game it's developed by Rare, directed and designed by Chris Savoy, and was released for the N64 on the 5th of March 2001 that was re-released for the Xbox One in 2015. The game is set in the Fairy Panther King's Kingdom where the player controls Conker, a red squirrel, coming down from a big night on the piss, traversing the overworld, completing tasks and objectives in order to advance to the next level. The game received critical acclaim and success, although some critics dishonorated the title for its foul language, cruel jokes and disgusting humour, but nevertheless received a 9.9 .9 out of 10 from Casa Massinia and declared that the graphics were the best on the N64. Let's check it out. We won't get too in debt with Bad Fur Day, as like most rare games, this is big. So we'll just have a look at the gameplay. But seriously, hands down, one of the best titles ever made. This game is like a forbidden fruit. Take a bite and you'll be hooked. I never got to experience this when I was a kid. You see, when I was younger, there was two types of media my mother forbidden. This and the TV show South Park. Talk about feeling left out. The controls work great, although I do prefer the N64 version, the analog sticks on the Xbox are a little bit sensitive, and obviously this being the remastered, the graphics, character models, environments and dialogue are much more appealing. You'll find that most N64 games are built around the controller, and therefore it's very hard to emulate the gameplay, as most of these titles were built with original hardware in mind. So if you want the best experience, then definitely check out the original. However, it's a pretty rare game and will cost you an arm and a leg. At some point, the Rare developers had this crazy idea of swapping out content in between some of their titles. The Stop and Swap. Clear evidence of this is found in both Donkey Kong and Banjo-Kazooie, with that stupid ice key and the hidden square in the wall that can't be accessed. Using the 4MB RAM expansion, the goal was to swap data from one cartridge to another. Now in theory, the RAM does hold information without the card inserted, but in practice, consumers would be potentially damaging their games and systems. Avoiding a lawsuit, Nintendo declined the idea, and the stop and swap was never implemented. Overall, just like most Rare games, this one is brilliant. Definitely check it out. Let's finish up with a title on the PC requested from a Mr. Matthew Simons. Thanks for the fan art, you moron. Viet Cong is a tactical first-person shooter game. It's developed by Pterodon Illusion Softworks and published by Gathering and was released for the Xbox, PlayStation 2 and Windows on the 26th of March 2003 for North America and the 17th of April for Europe and Australia. The game is set during the Vietnam War in 1967 where the play takes control of our main protagonist, Sergeant Steve R. Hawkins, a United States Special Force team where the player must carry out a series of various missions in several locations such as New Peck, South Vietnam near the Cambodian border. Receiving an average reception upon its release, Viet Cong was named the 8th best computer game by Computer Games Magazine and received GameSpot's Game of the Month in April 2003. Let's check it out. Viet Cong aims for a high level of authenticity and realism. The AI definitely makes out for a challenge, ducking for cover, changing positions frequently, making it quite difficult to anticipate. Brilliant. The graphics are very solid. The game uses the Terror Engine 2, and at the time, this looked pretty advanced. As far as the tone goes, yeah, it's pretty sad. We all know that nothing good came out of the Vietnam War, but it's good to see that the developers deplete the real life events, like murder, kidnapping, gassing, torture, and so forth. The dialogue, apart from the racist remarks such as Charlie and Gooks, this game tells a pretty good story. Not bad.
The game provides a pretty good variety of weapons. Pistols, machine guns, rifles such as the Makarov PM, Smith Wesson, M3, Thompson, Sten Mark II, Remington, Carbine, Winchester, M60, AK-47, as well as knives, grenades, bazookas and RPGs. This game also features the ability to search dead bodies for equipment such as extra ammunition, medkits and intel. As for the gameplay, the player is encouraged to use tactics wherever possible, ducking for cover, sneaking up on enemies and weapon arsenal. Very similar to Counter-Strike, Viet Cong received critical acclaim and success. A brilliant title and in my opinion still holds up today. Definitely check it out. Got a request for a game? Message me and I'll do all I can to make it happen for you. As always, I'm the Pizza Man and I'm out of here.